is a mad culture. My name is Kojuma no King of the MRC. Now today the budget is open. Wide open. Yes, because I'm here with Kenneth the Japan, co-founder of Afrochella. What's good, man? What's up, bro? How you doing, man? I'm great, bro. I'm what great. What a time to be alive. What a time to be alive. And uh, it is, it's a long time coming. Finally, you're here. Yeah. Uh, we're talking about Afrochella, obviously. Um, it's become a beacon for African music, arts, everything that has to do with coming back home and enjoying the beauty of Ghana and Africa. And uh, I was there for the very first episode. So I'm wondering, um, before I was even, uh, first event, I should say, uh, but before then, what happened to make Afrochella become Afrochella? Um, so we actually, well, I moved to Ghana 20, 2014, and it was my first Christmas year as an adult. So I invited a lot of my classmates to come to Ghana. And that time to Abdul was coming to Ghana as well too, and like some other friends. And we used to just party in the evening. The rest of the, rest of the guys would sleep, but then I had yeah. to go to work. So party, sleep, <laughs> party, just like that. So um, Abdul was like, why don't we come up with a festival? But even before that, we started doing other events because we was doing events in America already in New York. Okay. So 2015, we started doing events in Ghana. The first event we did was December 26, 2015, Shiny Beach in Angua. Failed. Zero. The <laughs> artists didn't even show up. Whoa. We paid them, crowd. They didn't even show up. Whew. But I don't blame them, because that time I was watching on Instagram and on Twitter, people were talking uh, about People were there, but then the artists themselves. It's funny, because one of the artists actually just called me recently, too. So, <laughs> and um, then we did two more events, failed as well. Then the fourth one, D Black actually gave us his place. That's when we first opened Onyx. Right. So right. we could um, use his place. He didn't charge us for anything. Okay. Everything he took up for cost. And he, even that, people still didn't show up. So he's like, you know what? Whatever you guys <laughs> made at the gate, he didn't even count the money. He's like, just take everything. Cool. Then, fast track to 2017, Abdul went back to the US and mm-hmm. he called me. It was, in, it was February. He said, oh, I found the spot. But before that, we was um, planning, let's do a festival. The other guys we was doing the events with in Ghana that failed, it was like, nah, they're not with it. It was 11 of us. And wow. it was like, no, they're not, they're not going to lose at my house. And it was like, no, no, no. It's not they, can, they can't do it anymore. No, far, no, far. We keep losing money. Hmm. So then I blinked up to him, like, yo, let's do it, let's do it. Let's get the rest of it. So wow. he went back to America. And when he went to America in February 2017, he called me, yo, I found the venue. I was at work. I'm like, how did you find the venue? I'm... I live in Accra, you in America, you in New York. So how do you find a venue? He said, oh, it's yeah. Polo Club. No, at that time, I didn't know where it was at. So then I told him, okay, when I get off on break, I'll go there. So I went to Polo Club, and then the manager at the time, I don't know if he's still the manager there, his name is Eric. He's like, oh, this is the place. And I was like, oh, this is nice. And I took a video, and I sent it to him. I'm like, yo, let's do yeah, it. Yeah, let's, nice. let's do it. So um, when we, later on, we, I booked the venue. Then now we have a venue, then we started coming up with different names. So then... We added some of our other friends. We added um, Edward, then we added Vanel, Alvin, Kwame, and Emmanuel. So we just okay. formed the whole team. So then um, Edward was like, for this to work, let's make a lot of noise. Uh, so he mm-hmm. tweeted it. People was hating on it. <laughs> then we still got more energy. So we used one of our pictures from America from an event. It was Lady in the Carnival outfit. Right. And we like, you know what? Let's do a billboard. And we put one billboard up. And then still, people are hating, you know what? And I was like, you know what? Let's go take a picture under it. So that, let's just do this. So then um, we started pushing it. Then we started booking artists and whatnot. Then um, 
Khadija hit you up and he was yeah. he hosted the first one with Afia. Yeah. Um, then we started talking to the different artists and whatnot. Because what we wanted to do that time, it was 10 regions. So we wanted to highlight the different regions in Ghana. So that's why we mainly focused on food, art, music, and culture. Because we wanted to embrace the culture that we have, the Ghanaian culture, the African culture. Because growing up in America, sometimes now I think it's more cool. But when I was younger, oh, you you African, African booty scratch, oh, you guys, you, your food smell and all that stuff. Because I remember when I was Fresh off the boat. Yeah, yeah, fresh <laughs> off the boat, yeah. You don't even know where your parents are from and all that. So when we started doing that, then we was like, let's highlight the culture. So that's why, like, our main company is called Culture Management Group. Right. So it's about, like, everything about culture. Then we did the first half of Chella. We, start, we sold tickets, 2,500. But I remember in the morning of December 28, 2017, so many people... It was around like 7.30 in the morning. Right. Going tickets for Fachella. Because that yeah. year, was the, um, Ebony was the headliner. Yeah. Ooh. So, so many Ooh. people. And I remember it was with this one guy. Because like, at that point, we were just selling to... It doesn't even matter. We were just selling. And one guy, he was an Indian guy. He was the old. Dang, I'm the old. One second. Like, we were trying to sell it to the girls first. And then other... Because it was like a long line. And then, I don't know, he started speaking Chi. He's like, oh, Chala and I, I be gone into it. What's up? Like, <laughs> and told tickets and even moms. Hey! Is an is Indian um, that speaks tree. So <laughs> that first year, we did 4,500 for Fachella, even though we was estimated just 2,500. The day right. of, we sold 2,000 extra yeah. tickets. Then after that, we moved to Ewok Sports Stadium. That went yeah. to another controversy. We were like, mm. oh, nobody. Because I was just driving past it. Because right. I didn't grow up in Ghana, so I was just driving past it. I'm like, if we're going to expand, let's do it somewhere like bigger in the Big, stadium. Yeah. So I went there. I, I just drove by the stadium, and I looked. I'm like, oh, this is cool. So mm-hmm. I took a picture in the video and I put it in the group chat. That time, like, it was really beat up. Like, the stadium, like, yeah. needs the paint job, all that stuff. So then it was like, okay, let's book it. We booked the stadium. And that 2018, we did two th- um, 12,000 people. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Then That's when we had the, the stage on the other, other side. side no, yeah. Not where the recent that, one Exactly, is, yeah. Yeah, it was the other side. Even now, yeah. the funny thing about that, the stage actually fell. Uh, on the mm. other side, because mm. on the on, on twenty no on twenty eighteen when we first did it, yeah, because that time we were still rookies. So the the reason why it fell is because of the gravity from the plane, because that's the side yeah. of the plane is moving. So then ah. oh, boom, and then like we had to like fix everything. I, I think that was later again. on in the show, like totally no 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 it wasn't right? no no no, no, was it didn't happen, no no it didn't happen during when anybody was there. It was during setup time. Oh, oh during the dr- setup. No no, okay. no it yeah. wasn't during no because no, the first because I heard a different story that. It, it it broke after the event. No, no, that was another. Oh, that, that was, was a that was before event. the event. Was, okay. No, no, no. Okay. That, this, what you talking about is somebody else's event. You don't, <laughs> you, don't <laughs> you don't want to mention any names. Okay, okay, okay. But so then, twenty sixteen, so so twenty nineteen. Then um, we the year of return we did sixteen thousand five hundred. Mm. Then twenty twenty, COVID. So it was like you know yeah. let's try to even because people were inside for so long. Let's do right. something for free, but we mm. couldn't do it in the stadium. So. We did um, Independence yeah. Square. The, the block party. So the block party. I forgot yeah. the block party, yeah. yeah. So then we just did the block party. We did it for free. But if um, people were coming in randomly, you just get tested and whatnot. Yeah. And then last year, we did um, 10,500 because we came back from COVID. And, and then this year, we're doing two days. Because originally, when we first started, we said that on our fifth year of the event, yeah. we're going to go to two days. Yeah. Technically, last year would have been our fifth year, but because of um, 2020 Corona, yeah. so this year will be technically our fifth year of actually doing a full festival. That's why we're doing the two days. So December 28th, December 29th. See you guys at Ewok Sports Stadium. You know what time it is. You know, the budget is wide open. Wide open. <laughs> it's a time, great time to be alive. Oh, it is, it is. It yeah, is. but I mean, between uh, the period of uh, five years, um, having the COVID, st- COVID still included, yeah. um, you've had like a plethora of like artists, like amazing artists. Yeah. From Whiskey to Sarkodie to Kujain Tree to Stone Boy. Yeah. Which ones were your favorite? All of them. <laughs> Very diplomatic. All of them. Because depending on the time of the year, and that's so, all um, depending on the time when they perform or whatnot. Because I remember when we put um, Stone Boy and Daddy Lumba as headline, everybody's yeah. like Daddy Lumba. Yeah. But it was actually because growing up, we listened, we, our parents would listen to Daddy Lumba music or whatnot. Yeah. But we, as like our generation, Stone probably Boy. never seen him perform oh, before. That's true. So it was like, you know what? Let's bring the old school artist. Right, right. But tell me, tell me, in, in all of this, even in your story, you started with uh, putting the name out and the billboards and people yeah. were hating. 
how have you dealt with the negative energy of it? And I'm asking this because I have been always on the stage of yeah. Afro I always see the beauty of it. Yeah. And I don't involve myself with the Twitter conversations yeah. enough to be immersed in why people hate on it. But from your side, how does it feel to be doing something that seems so amazing but still get so much negative oh, press? Oh, but no, it's, it's good. It's, it doesn't matter because it actually pushes me. Me personally, it pushes me. Like when somebody says, oh, you can't do when you prove them wrong, I, ha, I told you. I, I told you. <laughs> so that one, I think not everybody is going to like you or not everybody's going to like what you do or what mm -hmm. you're doing. But if people are criticizing, you should take it in good faith. You shouldn't be like, oh, why are they yeah. hating on us? Why are they hating on us? Yeah. So all of us, that's how we think. So if um, so people are saying, oh, oh, this is not fine, do this, do that, do that, we yeah. take it. If it makes sense, of course, then we go by it. Because at the end of the day, if people are talking, that means we're either doing something right or something wrong. That's true. That's true. So um, there's this amazing thing that I came up with. Um, um, I came across, I should say. Um, there was something that had to do with Little Accra, mm -hmm. Afrochella Nike. Yeah. Me, I'm taking my time to say this because it was like, <laughs> boom. It's like, what the hell are we talking about? Yeah. How did that happen? So it was the 40th anniversary for Nike, the Uptowns, the, the, the white ups. Yeah. I think everywhere, everybody says it's different. And even in America, they call the Harlems, white yeah. ups, Air Where? Force <laughs> Ones. So yeah. different, different. Um, so then they approached um, us about doing something. But then the, the main reason why it doesn't say Afrocello on it, because you don't want to take all the credit. So that's right. why we essentially put Little Accra, but it still is the Afrocello logo. Right. Because we wanted to highlight everybody in Ghana. Mm. It's not just about Africa. Maybe we took the initiative, but it's about everybody. So if you see it when you when you get the sneakers. Don't worry, we got a pair for you. Don't worry, we got you. So, oh, when you see it, <laughs> like it have the different different details yeah. of different things about the Ghanaian culture. I saw Sean King's thing um, having it, and then I think someone put up a video of it where it had like a, it was really zoomed in. So I saw all like the, the details, design, yeah. the details of it, and who who came up with the design? The so, whole thing was Abdul, Abdul, Abdul Tiffany. Okay. Khadija, like, uh, it's a whole team, but he okay. led the whole thing about putting the design and everything together. Now, now this is what a lot of people will probably be wondering. Um, how it happened, I'm sure how it happened is a, is a long story, maybe more of a boring story, but what, what would you say is the actual um, pitch? Like, what was the reaction? What was the feedback from Nike receiving, like, a name like Little Accra, a design that's representing what is happening in a country that's in Africa? Trying to put that in the sneaker. Yeah, because um, it's like like just like how you just said it. Because we're a very, very small country or whatnot, even though it's thirty million, which is bigger yeah. than other countries. But if you can be able to now the country itself have their own shoe and other people, oh, what is Little Accra? So even if yeah. you now take Little out and you Google Accra, it's like what is Accra? Oh wow, yeah. that's the capital of Ghana. So now yeah. it can even bring more highlight to the country as well. Man, it's, a, it's amazing. Um, so this year we're having uh, two days, uh, 28th and 29th, 28th. December. Okay, Elwak. Elwak Sports Stadium. Okay. 20,000 people. 20,000 people. Now, I know normally this is around the time where you're gearing up to put out names and yeah. your lineup and all that. It's coming up very soon. Yeah, and I know you probably won't tell me, <laughs> but what can you tell me about the lineup and what's going to happen this what year? What I can tell you is Kojuma and is going to be on the stage. <laughs> <laughs> Are you mad? Yo, so, any artists? I wish I could say, but stay tuned, Afrochella.com. Okay. Afrochella on Instagram. So, you know what? I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm going to try and set you up. Uh -huh. I don't know why I'm telling you I'm about to set you up. So, but yeah. <laughs> but um, last year, you had Westgate. Yes. Are we going higher? Of course, we always have to go higher and higher. You have to exceed expectations. Hmm. Is that an African artist? Of course, an African is always going to headline Afrochella. So, there you have it. But it's not going to be Whiskey again. No. So it's not Whiskey. It's not an artist beneath Whiskey. It's going to be an African. Of course. You have too much information right now. Afro cello. <laughs> Afro cello, baby. African what do you want to tell them before African we go? Sound. I want to thank you guys. Mm. Shout out to Black Voter, From Back, all the different um, organizations, different groups, different people who have been helping us. Because end of the day, even though it seemed like, oh, we're taking a lot of the shine, mm. there's a lot of people too are helping us be shined. Yeah. So every day someone walk up to Ghana, you know what time it is. Oh, wait. Uh, just before you go, <laughs> what's your favorite thing, personally? Favorite, favorite thing, thing about Afrochella? Favorite thing? 
Well, when you sit, I'll give you a quick story. 2019. Mm. Um, so many people, because that time was when we first introduced the, the scanning of tickets. So many okay. people, and then the internet went down. So, so many people. And I'm running outside, because I was like, I see like so many people, I'm like, oh, as much as possible. I, had, I was using my phone as well, too, to scan people in. And I was wearing Jordans, the fours, and I'm running, like, I. Then the soul, the souls both came off, and I'm still Ooh. running. And I'm still from the floor. Like, Why do I feel heat <laughs> under my shoe? And then some lady taps me. Oh, young man, your sneakers is back there. It was actually my sixth grade teacher. <laughs> so she's like, and from America. So she's like, what are you doing here? I'm like, what are you doing here? Uh -huh. So I'm like, oh, this is my. She's like, oh, really? So that, I think that that was like, oh wow. Somebody that taught me in America. Right. She didn't know it was my event, and she came all the way, all the way to Ghana man. to see it. And I'm like, wow. But wow, we are almost there. We almost made it. <laughs> that's 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 an amazing story, man. Uh, Ch Charlie, thank you so much uh, for this one. I do appreciate it. Um, the whole point of a mad culture, um, just like you actually uh, sort of covered when you're explaining Afrochella, you said that the, the the company that's running it is culture management because yeah. everything has to do with a culture. Yeah. That's basically what a mad culture is. Because you know mad about. means dope, it means phenomenal. And we cannot do this without doing yeah. Afrochella because you're a very integral part of the culture we have in Ghana, in Accra, in Africa in, in, in totality. So I, we have, do appreciate you on so many levels. Thank right? you. Are you mad? Are you mad? <laughs> Are you mad?